Ah, welcome back. I'm glad you guys are loving the videos and, and, you know, showing the support that you guys have. And that's why I keep coming back to spend this time to give you more. Because you guys have shown nothing but support for what we're doing here. And I appreciate it. Working very hard. And now we've arrived to part three. So that means there are two parts that you did not see. <laughs> If you did not know, this is your first time here. So that gives you time to stop the video, go back and watch the other two, and you can catch up right here. Or if you want to watch this one and go back and watch the other two, at the end of this video, they will have the links to both of the other two videos, and you can be caught up and won't miss a beat. All right. And for the rest of you guys, don't forget to continue supporting the page, hitting up the Cash App, which is Carcino. That's what's getting these videos pumped out. Or you can hit the Donate button that's in the description box. And for the rest of you, let's go! Now, what we left off at last time is where you guys saw the commercial that they filmed, the promo commercial for the Reebok shoes, the S-Dots, and the G6s, or whatever the G-Unit's shoes was called. And how Jay really had the last laugh. So, at this point, a lot of people want to know, well, what's happening with Preem? You never finished telling us what happened with Preem. That's because Preem wasn't really a problem for 50 Cent anymore. Preem had other things going on. Uh, the e-money bag situation that two guys end up, you know, snitching on him and testifying against Preem took Prem out of the picture. So Prem was no longer a factor and it had nothing to do with 50 Cent. So with him being locked up and being sentenced, he was not even a factor during the whole rise of 50 Cent at this point. While 50 is doing this meteoric rise, Prem is battling and still trying to fight for his life in trial with this whole e-money back situation. Now, moving right along, 50 Cent had the entire summer. He had the whole 2003 bus. So right away, Eminem is looked at as a genius for bringing this 50 Cent idea to the forefront because it's doing better than anybody ever imagined. They're making money hand over fist. And they like, we got to keep milking the cow. So they're coming out with all of music videos. They're coming out with all these different things. They got all these extra songs of 50 Cent. They're coming out with EP tapes. 50s everywhere. And they were like, well, we should just come with another album right at the end of the year. Hit them with another 50 Cent album. I'm like, yeah, that works for me. 50 don't mind. Which he didn't. But 50 had other plans. 50 wanted to put out G-Unit record. And they were like, what? He's like, yeah, I want to put out the G-Unit record. He's like, we already got songs. He's like, we just need to get the records out. And they were like, ah, Fifth, we, I mean, we can come out with G-Unit next year. 
we're talking about at the end of this year, you know, we just hit him with two fifty cent albums that we can and he was like, No, nah, I wanna put out G Unit. I wanna release my G Unit album this year while it's hot. You know, people the people wanna see it. It's like, trust me, it's gonna work. So aftermath and the scope. You know, aftermath is really where the problem lies. Shady records. That's where the problem lies. See, remember, Eminem said, this is your deal. And Lior Cohen almost signed G-Unit. So he had free enterprise to shop you know G unit around but he decided to keep everything under the same umbrella and sign G unit to their own label and being distributed by Interscope but Shady Records and Aftermath have no say So if 50 Cent wants to release G-Unit album, he could put out a G-Unit album. Interscope ain't going to complain because they're getting paid. 50 right now is the largest thing going. And he's under their umbrella. They said, look, if the G-Unit thing don't work, it's not going to ruin 50 Cent. So Jimmy's like, we're not losing any money here. I don't see a problem. Which Jimmy's not going to see a problem. He's, he's, his whole thing is, look at the upside. We got nothing but upside here. Let him do this project. Like, why are you even sweating him about putting out another album? Filth was like, I put out another 50 cent album too. We can drop that one in February of next year. Make it on Valentine's Day. We'll do that one like five months, six months after this. 50 Cent's work ethic is what they couldn't believe. So they couldn't believe 50 Cent's work ethic. Like, it's just uncharted how fast and how much he works. They're like, man, this guy just don't have an off switch. So they're like, look, let's milk this thing for what it's worth. We don't know how long we have it for, but we're glad it's on our side. Let's milk it. So let him do the G-Unit project. So they go right to work on putting out the G-Unit record, giving 50 what he needed. Now, Aftermath and, Ennis and Shady, you know, M don't care. But Dre kind of cared. <laughs> Dre is looking like, look, Aftermath got to get some of this. <laughs> you know, we got to produce some records or something on this album. So they worked it out where Dre can produce, you know, a couple of records. And Eminem will get a production credit on that. Because that was the only way they were going to get on the, you know, producer side. Because they like, look, <laughs> we put a lot in building this up. Dre can't believe he dropped the ball with not getting a piece of G-Unit. But, you know, 50 wasn't giving Dre. He was offering it only to Eminem to be a part of G-Unit and, uh, you know, own a piece of it. And M was like, nah, that's yours. You built that. That's all you. Now, on the other side of the chart... You got Jay. And Jay right now is going through a transition. Kanye West just had another blow up year right with 50 Cent. It was the debut of Kanye West 
as an artist and everybody loved Kanye's music and he was like the, they were like the yin and yang of the summer where 50 was the dark side Kanye was the light and with this going on in this narrative word is going around that Jay is going to step down he's going to retire and go into you know, probably management and, you know, some type of front office position, you know, or do something, you know, but he's getting out of the rap game. So he's going to retire. Everybody's excited about, you know, this is the last Jay-Z album that's going to come around. And Steve Stout went to 50 Cent and let 50 know while they was working with G Unit album, he was trying to lure 50 into a signing with him and his permanent management. He was like, you should let me, you know, handle, you know, everything, you know, let me, you need management. You know, like somebody plugged, you know, this Reebok deal just the beginning. You could be making a hundred million a year. I got other things lined up. I got, I got Heineken, I got Budweiser, I got all these guys on speed dial. I make a phone call right now and you getting these deals, but I'm not going to be doing no more freelance work. I just wanted to show you what I could do for you. And Fifth was like, yeah, I appreciate it, but I got it. You know, I got management, I got representation, I got my people in place. But I do appreciate we did good business. We could come down the line and do some business together. If you need me for something and I can help get something done, you know, I'm, I'm in. But not for, you know, just a one-off. And he was like, man, I could try to get you on Jay-Z's last album. You and Jay do a song on his last album? He's like, oh, Jay retired? He's like, yeah, this is his last one. He's going to go out with a bang. He was like, oh, when he coming out? Oh, gee, uh, probably before the year is out. So he was like, oh, okay. So he was already working on Beg for Mercy, and Jay had a release date coming out on um, November the 14th. 50 was like, find out if Jay, what Jay release date is, you know, for Jay-Z. Because everybody was going to try to maneuver and get away from Jay-Z's date. And they were like, we got to move away. And then they had Tupac's album that was coming out probably the week before it. The Tupac, um, you know, one of his uh, the albums that, that came out for the book. I mean, before the, like, DVD, one of those um, previous released albums, those were coming out at that time. And when you had that dropping all together at once, you looking at things that was transpiring in his fifth new, this is his opportunity. He's like, nah, I don't want to do a record on this album. But he can get on the G-Unit album if he want. Go tell Jay if he want to get on the G-Unit album, he can. Or if he want to go song for song, you know, I'll get on his album if he do a song for G-Unit. So that's what the deal was. He do a song for G-Unit, I'll do a song for his album. And that wasn't even in the cards for Jay. Jay never responded. It was nothing back, this and that. So he's all right, cool. So when Fifth was advertising the album, and they was like, you know, Jay-Z's at the end of the year. He's like, yeah, and I hear Jay retiring. He got the retirement album coming. He's like, and people's like, yeah, we're hearing the buzz that this is going to be Jay's last album. He's like, well, G-Unit album's coming out too. And we coming out on this date, so I'm quite sure he's going to move his date because he lied. Just, 
Uh, G Unit album was coming out like on the 18th. They was coming out that day. On the, I think it was the 18th or something that they were supposed to come out, or the 21st. He lied and said Jay's date was the 21st. He might want to move that date up or something and release it. I don't think he want to release nothing going up against me. <laughs> so, to set the stage, Fifth went out and did that and said, I don't think Jay at this point, you know, I'm coming in the game. I can see that's why he's getting ready to get out. <clears throat> he's smart. So Fifth is already setting the stage for this whole battle to take place. So all the J did, like right after that, is they responded in the magazine. They had, uh, what was it, The Source? <coughs> <coughs> then it was a billboard in New York. A J and what it is, the album cover, when he got the hat down. Jay-Z, the Black Album, coming soon. And then it had November 14th of another billboard. November 14th, the Black Album, Jay-Z. So now it's in bold letters that Jay's coming out on November the 14th. It's going to drop. It's going down. The Black Album It's advertised. It's in the magazines. The album's ready to go. And Jay is thinking, okay, you know, g Union is coming out, you know, whatever they're coming out, and He's not worried about it. They asked him about the Black Album. I asked him about, well, you the worry? He's like, no. This is, are you serious? <laughs> like, Jay is like, are you kidding me? You think I'm worried about that? So he's his whole focus is promoting the Black Album, and he's like, this is it. I'm going to retire. So it was announced that Jay's retiring. First, it was just the Black Album. Then Jay announced that this was going to be his last album. And, and, and then he was retiring. He was out of rap. And that became the big movement. And Fifth had already tried to steal the thunder by turning the narrative into Jay's getting out because I'm here. And Jay was like, nah, I'm retiring because, you know, I'm finna move into other aspects of business, you know, and in the, in the game, you know, I might run a label, I, I might do some other things, but right now, I'm finna just step back, get out of the game, let the young bucks have it, you know, but it's been a heck of a ride, and this last album is gonna be great. So when he backed away and stepped down and was retiring, this is like a big celebration now, so... Anything going against it was going to be looked at with, you know, negative eyes. So Fifth didn't mention nothing about it no more. He just went to promote G-Union. So while they was having a film crew doing a documentary for it, they was going to record the process and make a movie called Fade to Black. And Fifth was like, we're going to move the date to go up against Jay. And then that's going to be the new promotion. So about a month in October, right around the Halloween date time, they announced Trick or Treat. <laughs> it was like, Trick or Treat. <laughs> Beg for Mercy, G-Unit album comes out, new release date, November 14th. The fans can't wait. They got to have it now. Now the wait won't be long at all, November 14th. They had the other date crossed out, and they had November 14th up there. And they're going up against Jay-Z's album. So the promotion was coming out. 50 Cent versus Jay-Z. Who's going to win in the album sales? And Fifth again was like, man, I implore Jay right now. He should drop his album right now or push his album up and drop it at Christmas. Because... I don't want to destroy his sales on his last album. He's probably trying to get his last last bag before he get out of the game. Because the game is mine right now, man. 
So Filth was really feeling it. And then as soon as Beg for Mercy dropped, boom. He came out on the same day. And Jay-Z's last album outsold first week sales, outsold G-Unit. G-Unit sold like 300,000. Jay-Z sold like 400,000 first week. And everybody's like, man, that's what he get going up against Jay. What was he thinking? Nobody's really paying attention to the fact that G-Unit album debuted at number three on the charts and sold 300,000 in the first week. Jay-Z was number one debut selling almost gold in the first week. To this day, the G-Unit album and Jay-Z album was battling and the promotion was going. People started to pick up on it, watching it and track it. They weren't even paying attention to the Tupac album no more. <clears throat> Even though it came out and it was doing decent numbers, it debuted at number two. But without Pac being here, that was going to dissipate. Which it did. Finally, touchdown Tannehill. Let's go, baby. Fantasy football. I'm in the playoffs, y'all. <laughs> so, while we're sitting there... Uh, Watching the battle go down. Each week, the G-Unit album is getting more and more play. And Jay-Z is going through it. It's a lot of turmoil going on within Rockefeller, Dame, and Jay. To, it's affecting the actual product that they're trying to really push. And get out, you know, the narrative of everything out. You know, the Black Album's out, and it's a lot of problems going on behind the scenes with Dame and Jay and all of this. And they were a little upset that the momentum was, you know, fading a little bit. So Jay was unhappy. To be 100% to be honest, Jay was a little pissed off. And the reason why he was pissed off was very simple fact. They felt they led with the wrong song. But that was the song Jay wanted to go with. But other people wanted to lead off with another single. But he thought, no, we should go with the, instead of, you know, a street anthem first, then come with the, you know, let's come with the conservative laid back track. They led off with change clothes. And change clothes. Change clothes became the um, the first single that was kind of laid back, and it really didn't have the impact that they they expected. And this was the problem. And Jay felt Change Clothes was not the right track. And he didn't want to lead off with Change Clothes. And he was like, this was wrong. Encore should have been the first song. Or uh, 99 Problems should have been the first song. And it was a big, big argument behind the scenes. And he's like, no, 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 no. We did the right thing. Don't worry. It's going to pick up. Because from November 4th, when the single was dropped, and then right before the album came out, like eight days later, whatever, change clothes, single drops, and then the album comes and, People just like, man, that killed the sales after the first week. But everybody's favorite song was Dirt on Your Shoulder. Immediately. They heard that and was like, oh, okay. This is what it is. So they knew what the song was. And Jay knew this song was a hit when he first heard it. He knew. 
This was going to be his second. Nobody had a problem with this being the second release. Some people thought it should have been the first. And I'm the one that thought Dirt Off Your Shoulder should have been the first song you come out with off out the gate. Then you could come with Change Clothes as your second single. You come out hard first and let them know the Black Album, look, Jay's here. Dirt Off My Shoulder, then Change Clothes. Then you can come with Encore or whatever else you want to come with after that. Because that's going to change the narrative. So meanwhile, while they're doing that and arguing over there on that side, even though they had a successful first week, they're kind of tapering down. And momentum is going to beg for mercy. Beg for mercy is picking up steam every week. Because I'm going to teach you how the stunt was out way before the album came out. That was out in the fall. So Stunting 101 was out two months before the album came out. So that wasn't even the original single for the album. Even though it was going to be on the album, it was counted as the single for the album, and it was out two months before the album dropped. So the single that dropped before the album was popping them things. We be popping them things everywhere we go to. Ain't no gangsters around, no my whole crew. Now, all of these songs wind up taking it to a whole new plateau. And while Jay Z and Rockefeller is having problems with the launch, I mean, with the handling, you know the black album g unit is running things smooth as a bell want to get to know you come out next in january they don't waste no time dropping the second one while you got 99 problems and dirt on your shoulder and come out to march as an official single they waited way too long they went from november to March before they even put out another single. You know, it was just nonsense going on all in between. So they messed up that launch. I mean, I, I mean, not just the whole first month, just between Def Jam and Rockefeller. It's just, they missed a mark there where they left for about probably 600,000 album sales on the floor. Where 50 them picked that up. So from September to January, they had three singles out and they were burning. Then Smile came out after that, and people were listening to all the other tracks. At the end of it, 50 end up outselling the Blackout in the end of the day. It's they're close in sales, but G Unit album is like five million. Almost 6 million records sold, where Jay-Z's album, the Black album, is like almost 4 million. So, you're looking at 6 million to 4 million, 2 million difference. The G-Unit album outsold the Black album. Overall. So, 51. Now, once this was done... Jay saw what happened with this whole layout. And while Jay is in retirement, 50 is doing his thing and he's cruising and all this success. He's looking at it like, I like this guy. Like, I like his business, you know, mode and how he went about promoting the G Unit Beg for Mercy and playing against my Black Album. And he was successful in doing that. Jay was like, hmm, okay, I'm going to be able to work with this guy. We're going to get something going in the future. He see that already. So the studios decided, let's not do another 50 Cent album because of the success of G-Unit. It was actually very successful. 
they's like, you know what? We had the Eight Mile movie. Let's go into making a movie about 50 Cent's life. That is a movie by itself. Forget a documentary. We're missing out on the big money. So they approve almost a $40 million budget about a movie on 50 Cent's life. Where 50 is the lead, just like 8 Mile, Eminem was the lead. And this was going to be a big rollout for him. So they wanted to give him um, acting lessons and things of this nature. And it was like, this guy's a natural with the camera. But there's certain emotional scenes that they, they want to work with him on. And 50 was game for that. But he wasn't going to be around because he had things he had to do. While Jay-Z's doing his final tour and everything, they're doing their G-Unit shows. He's getting ready to uh, release his uh, solo albums of his artists. Fifth is like, oh, no, 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 no. We got Lloyd Banks coming. He's like, Banks is coming. Then we got Young Buck coming. And when Yayo get it out, you know, we're going to come with the Yayo album. It's all coming on G-Unit. And true to his word, in the summertime, they released <coughs> The Hunger for More. Fifth was barely around at that time. So, Jay-Z is out the game, really, just doing his shows. And they had a show for, a promo show for... The hunger for more. And ESPN, Jay Z's watching ESPN and he sees Lloyd Banks on ESPN performing I'm So Fly and said, How did this happen? I never done this. No rapper ever done this. How did Lloyd Banks be the first rapper to do this? He knew then. Fifty was the guy he needed to be working with. So in the summertime, Fifth had the lead of star shooting the movie. So the songs he worked out with Buck, he flew in for like two days, worked on Buck album. They had so much going on at the time. It was virtually impossible for him to focus on Buck album and do the movie at the same time with distribution. And he tried, so the launch was a little messed up because of leaks and stuff, bootlegs. But Buck album still sold millions. Just like Lloyd Banks, who got a personality of a book. He was able to sell millions. And people are like, wait a minute. This has never happened in the history of any crew. Maybe Wu-Tang Clan. But nothing like this from gangster rappers. You know, Jay couldn't get Beans or Memphis Bleak. None of them really popping. How did 50 do this? So, after this maneuver, Jay had opened up the 4040 Club. He's doing good. And he's in a transitional point of getting away from Rockefeller.
and stepping completely out of the picture. So when that moment happened and he stepped away, after the tours and everything was done, <clears throat> an announcement was made. Leo was leaving and Jay was going to become the new president of Def Jam. That was changing the spectrum altogether. Now, during this whole successful run, 50 is overworking himself. All those songs he was working on for the, the Valentine's Day Massacre album, is now going to be used for a soundtrack called Hustler's Ambition. It's the name of the movie about his life. Then Hustle and Flow comes out. Now Hustle and Flow sounds like Hustler's Ambition. They have to change the title. So they couldn't think of one in time. So they just thought, get rich or die trying. The movie. Which works good, but if you have a soundtrack, people already think they've purchased Get Rich or Die Trying, the album. So the album would normally be the soundtrack of the movie. So now there's a Get Rich or Die Trying movie and a Get Rich or Die Trying soundtrack. Which really doesn't make any sense, but it's 50, so it worked. Now songs like window shopper and all these things that were going to be on the massacre album ended up on this album and the massacre album had so many hit songs a lot of them went to a new situation that was developing another artist that was hard to get off the ground but was always around Game. Game walked through the door with animosity towards Memphis Bleak and Rock Nation and Jay-Z. And Fifth told him when he had brought it up one time in an interview, like, yeah, man, you know, we ain't rocking with Rock Nation and, and Rotten Rockefeller and Jay-Z and Memphis Bleak. And he was like, gang, let me talk to you, man. You ain't even dropped an album yet. Don't, don't mention nothing about Jay right now. Jay's in a whole different position. You know, if you got a problem with Memphis Bleak, keep with Memphis Bleak or whatever. You can beef with him. But, you know, leave Jay out of it. So he was all right. So after that was done, he goes right back again on another radio station. Yo, you know 50 Cent, you know, is ruling the East Coast. I'm the 50 Cent of the West Coast. And, you know, for all the mother companies, it's a G unit for life. Black Wall Street for life. And that means when I'm on the East Coast, I still get more love than Jigger or Rockefeller or whatever. Meth Bleak. It was like, what is going on here? This dude has done it again. So Fifth, who put his whole album on hold, that was ready to go, he muted vocals, took him out to his home out in Farmington, Connecticut, let him record songs, and Jay is aware of this. So Jay, who was thinking, you know, Fifth is pretty cool, now he's a little like, whoa, hesitant, like, oh, so this what they marketing plan is? I'm out the game. So they think this is cool to do. So he was feeling a certain way. You know, Jay was like, oh, they think because I'm out the game, it's cool to, you know, say my name and, you know, throw it around. Like, it's cool. Jay ain't finna do nothing. He retired. So now we can take shots at him. And they finna, he thinking this is Fifth's marketing plan to try to make me look ridiculous. 
So it was some res you know, some reservations put there. Then it comes back that that wasn't the case. That this is a lone wolf. Because he goes overseas and does this whole Rockefeller layout. I'm quite sure you guys have heard it. But he goes, gets the whole people overseas doing his promo. And he's really feeling himself because his album is taking off. And just start really going in. Benny Siegel can suck, ma. Mel Bleak can suck, ma. Rockefeller can suck, ma. Jay-Z can suck, ma. G-Unit. And he says G-Unit at the end of it. Now this gets back to Jay. It's on. In his mindset, Jay is hot. So now, fifth note, damage has been done. Because they spent all this time to promote the game. Game album is selling. He's filling himself. He put this out. Fev gets on the phone to try to call Jay. Jay ain't taking his call. He knows Fifth been calling. And this wasn't no assistant. This was Fifth himself. So he was like, I'm trying to let, him, let Jay know this is not our move. This is not coming from G-Unit. This is some other stuff that's coming. And Bleak was the one, and Tata got the information, and Tata was like, yeah, I spoke to Jake, and um, they know what it is with him. You know, Bleak already explained it. Like, this is some previous stuff. This ain't got nothing to do with you. But he was like, I told him you was trying to reach him and everything and talk to him and let you know it ain't that. But, um, but nah, he ain't finna take your homeboy out. You know, he just finna, you know, touch him a little something light. You know, in that freestyle he did on the radio station, he's like, he's just touching him a little something like just to let him know that he could if, the, if he continues to go on, you know, Jay would take him out the game. And he was like, all right, cool. And that's what 50 looked like because he's like, dude, game ain't established like that. Jay can come back and crush him quick. And then there go the money. All this stuff we done spent trying to build game up, he gone. And we done wasted all this money. So fifth movie comes out, and in the movie, you know, of course, because he didn't have any Caucasian people on the poster, they actually suggested overseas. They show you how racist things is over there. They suggested that they put Eminem in the poster behind him, even though Eminem's not in the movie. Eminem got his hand on his shoulder and, like, dipping his head down so it wouldn't actually be Eminem but just so that they could sell it overseas. Are you kidding me? So because Eminem has a, basically an all-white cast, right? No, he did not. He had about two, three white people in the movie. Everybody else was black. 50 Cent has a predominantly all-black starring cast because that's who was around him. And this becomes... A B side movie where Eminem gets nominated for Oscars and everything else and makes all this money internationally. They made over $100 million internationally. They spent two, what, $40 million on the movie. The movie made almost $250 million. They spent $40 million, same amount of money on 50 movie. 50 movie makes like $50 million. No international theaters was trying to air Get Rich or Die Trying, even though he's the largest selling artist at its time, next to Eminem. Now, the situation that went by everybody's, um, mind that didn't escape everyone else is the fact that 50 cent is now the man no one was able to do in that short of time period of time 
what he was able to do from 2003 to 2005. He's got two artists that sold millions of records. They did a group album that sold millions of records. He got two albums out, a, a mixtape, I mean, a, a soundtrack to a movie. And he has a motion picture out. Nobody has done that in that short a period of time and been successful. No one. Now, things are starting to change as this dissipates. Jay Z's the president, and things are getting ready to turn around. As Kanye West is coming into his own, he talks to 50 Cent about some things that were going on at Rock Nation with Rockefeller. Now that Jay's the president and running things, there's some problems going on. And things didn't get explained fully. But you're going to know it now. And we'll save that for part four. Because <laughs> now we finna get to the grease. Don't forget, click one of the videos in the corners. Don't forget, hit that uh, Cash App, Carcino. And definitely don't forget to click the Donate button in the description box, which I'm going there right now to check this and answer your questions. Yeah, it's going to get crazy now with a bunch of stuff you probably didn't know. I'm out.